Are you excited to be together again one more Sunday? Let us all stand as we enter into his presence. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Join with me now as we come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Father God, we just thank you for giving us breath of life for another day. Thank you for allowing us to see this day, the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. As we come together one more time, we say thank you for life and health and strength and for the ability to gather together with our brothers and sisters here in this um, auditorium and those online. And we thank you right now as we come to worship you that the praises will go forth, the songs will reach your voice heavens and that you will come in and sup with us and break every stronghold deliver those who need a deliverance heal those who need a healing give financial victory to those who need it and as our pastor brings the word that it will be a word that would bring life to us that would take us today and through the week it would give us the ability to know who we are in you to have strength to have victory to overcome every fiery dark of the enemy. Bless the praise singers as they lift their voices and the entire service, Lord, we commit it to you. We pray that those who might accidentally come on the line will not turn off, but will continue as they vast in your presence and eat of your word. We thank you right now. We give you praise, honor, and glory for this and all that will be done to the honor and glory of your name. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hello and good morning, Love Fellowship family and friends. Good morning. Come on, that's it. Good morning, Love Fellowship good morning. family and friends. Good morning. The Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. So let us enter into this place today with thanksgiving, with praise, with glory unto him, with thanks this morning. I don't know about you, but I came with a praise in my heart. I came with a praise in my spirit today because he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy isn't he? This song says, our help is in the name of the Lord. It's an oldie but a goodie. You guys may know it, so join us because this is praise right here. This is praise for us together in one accord. So come on, it's like this. Come on, you got it. Come on. Come on. Our help is in the name of the Lord. That's it. Our help is in the name of the Lord. For the Lord our God is mighty. Our help, our help, our help is in the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. For the Lord. Come on. Our help, our help, our help is in the name of the Lord. When trouble seem to surround us, sing. Our help is in the name of the Lord. And our enemies try to confound us. Our help is in the name of the Lord. God is good, don't forget, and he's never failed us yet. Our help, come on. Our help, our help is in the name, our help is in the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. For the Lord our God is my team. Come on. Our help, our help. Our help is in the name of the Lord. His name is Jesus. He's the rock of our salvation. Come on. Jesus. He's a lifter of our heads. Our hope and tribulation. His name is Jesus. 
the only one to turn to Jesus. He's a rock of our salvation. Jesus. He's a lifter of my head. Jesus. Our hope and tribulation. Grace of peace. Lord and King. Mighty God is He. Our help. of our King, face to face with Him. Hallelujah. Amen. Does anyone else desire that as well? Come on. How I long to breathe the air of heaven where pain is gone and mercy fills the street to look upon the one who bled to save me and walk with him for all eternity that's your church there will be a day and there will be a day when all will bow before him there will be a day when death could be no more Standing face to face with you, man, and rose again. Holy, holy is the Lord. And every prayer we prayed in desperation. Come on. The songs of faith we sang through doubt and fear. In the end, and in the end, we'll see that it was worth it when he returns to wipe away our tears. Yeah, there will be a day when all will bow before him. There will be a day when death will be no Standing face to face with you, died and rose again. Holy, holy is the Lord. And on that day, we join the resurrection and stand beside the heroes of the faith with one voice with one voice a thousand generations sing worthy is the lamb who was slain forever he shall reign so never will be today Shout to him forever with angels in the same. We raise a mighty roar. Glory to our God, who gave his life beyond the grave. Oh, 
give him praise. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fellowship. Good morning, La Fellowship. If you guys would like to stand with me and say the word confession. In three, two. This is God's word to me. It is my daily bread for spiritual strength. It is my guarantee to always be a winner. It is my strength to overcome all obstacles and challenges. It is the last word on my health, my prosperity, my financial success, my destiny, I now hide it in my heart. Amen. Thank you. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, wait. Praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> Amen. I know that he's worthy to be praised. Is that right? There's no one like Jesus. There's no one like Jesus. There's a song that says, ain't nobody can do me like Jesus. <laughs> ain't nobody can do me like the Lord. Um, and so we're excited about that as the children go back into children's church. Um, Today, I want to just uh, continue our study on God, the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to just function on the roles of God and the roles of the Son, and then starting next week, we're just going to go right through um, dealing with the Holy Spirit himself. Um, uh, I, I'm just so grateful to God because he's been good to me. I, I don't know about your testimony, but my testimony is that he's been good to me. He's been a friend to me. And so I'm so grateful today uh, for the goodness of God. Now, um, in my last message, we established, and I'm just going to review this, that the trio of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit comprises what the King James Version captions. The King James Version is just a translation of the Bible is the original translation, and it captions the trio of God the Father, God the Son, as the Godhead. So if you read the King James Version, wherever you see the Godhead, it's referring to the trio of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Uh, other Bible translations, uh, you know, the Message Bible, the and uh, you know, the New Living Translation, and so forth and so on, they, they, the, the terms they use are the following divine being, divine nature, or, or fullness of deity. Um, but pastors, Bible teachers, seminarians, preachers, um, and others caption the trio of, the Trini of, of, of God the Father, God the Son, as the Trinity. They consider, they, they use, that's the term that's used. And in fact, it is most commonly used in the Christian faith. You're going to always find that, the, that you'll hardly ever hear the word Godhead and you'll hardly ever hear any other word to describe the Trinity. It's called the Trinity. Um, and the Trinity uh, is comprised, again, of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And this is important knowledge because many of us, you know, don't really understand who God is. Or we think of God 
in a particular way, you know, one that we probably grew up with, uh, one that we probably adapted ourselves. But, you know, the image you have to know of God is the one that he describes of himself. Because, you know, what? at the end of the day, no one can describe you better than you. And if you can't describe yourself, then you know you got absolute problems. And so God knows who he is. And so we need to know exactly what, what he does and who he is. Um, the New Testament certifies and identifies and reveals all three as being fully God. Although they are God as one, because we don't have three gods, there's only one God, but they're also God in their own individual person. Uh, the person of God the Father, the person of God the Son, the person of God the Holy Spirit. And when we worship, we are really worshiping all three. All three are being worshipped because they're all persons and because they're all God. And um, because whatever one does, all are in it together. And what uniquely makes them God uh, as one and makes them God in their individual person is they all together individually possess the five unique attributes of God. And these are so important because you know what? When you get to understand that these unique attributes of God are only possessed by God. Nobody else possesses these attributes. If you were to look up these attributes in other, in other spiritual beings, uh, other spiritual personalities, other spirits, you'll never find them because only God possesses these five attributes. And what are these five attributes? Well, first, that God is omniscient. That means that he's what? All-knowing. He knows all things. The, the other thing is that he's omnipotent. That means that he has what? All power. Now, if he has all power, how much power does Satan have? <laughs> None. Because God is almighty. That's why when Jesus resurrected from the grave, he says, all power, what? Is given unto me, where? In heaven and on earth. I'm in total control. Uh, and then, then he's omnipresent. Uh, you know what that means? That he's present with you at all times. And that even if he's present with Minister Wendy right now, he's also present with Minister Ingrid right now. He's also present with Eon as he sits right here. In other words, none of us lose the presence of God because he's with someone else. Because he's omnipresent. And I know that it's hard to understand because the, we don't, we're not omnipresent. And we don't know anyone else who's that way. And so the concept that one person can be everywhere at one time. They can be in Germany at the same time that they're in Italy. They can be in Italy at the same time that they're in Jamaica. They can be in Jamaica at the same time they're in Brazil. Guess what? Only our God can do that. That's why he's called the almighty God. And, and the other thing about God, he's eternal. That means he cannot die. I don't know about you, but see, if you know the Lord Jesus Christ and you understand the scriptures, you know that that's the most critical aspect of God. All there is no other God who has this characteristic. In other words, the characteristic is eternal. No other God in heaven above, the earth below, or the waters under the earth has the characteristic of eternal. Buddha is a supernatural figure in the Indian religion. You know what? He died at 80. And you know what he died from? From ingesting uh, some spoiled mushroom or pork. And he's supposed to be the supernatural figure that they, that they actually look up to and worship. Muhammad, Muhammad as, as, we, as we know him, was a supernatural figure in the Islam religion. And guess what, what age he died? He died at the age of 61 and never resurrected. You know, all these figures that were supposed to be, the, you know, the, the, the savior of their people. Uh, they were supposed to be the ones that would always be there. Guess what? They expired at a certain time and the people had to go on on their own. But I want you to know the God that we serve. You know, he died. But in three days, the Bible says that the grave could not hold him. In other words, and by the way, you know what? If he wanted to resurrect on day one, he could have done it. If he wanted to resurrect on day two, he could have done it. 
If he wanted to resurrect on day three, he could have done it. But you see, he went, the Bible says that he went into hell and he set all those saints that had died before David and Samuel and all these other the saints. Remember, they were, they were being held in a place called paradise in hell. In other words, there were two compartments of hell before Jesus actually resurrected. There was a compartment where all people like the, the, the rich man, he was there in that part of hell. But that's the part of hell where they were burning. Remember what the rich man says when he ended up in hell? He says, can't. He says, I am tormented in this flame. So the moment you die without Christ, the flame starts. Some people think that we're gonna that it's gonna come after Jesus comes. No, the moment you die, one or two things start. Either eternity starts for you, eternal life, or which really continues, I should say, or your your punishment in hell starts. Hell does not wait until the world is over. It starts the moment you die. The Bible says it has been appointed for man, what? Once to die, and then what? And then the judgment. And so again, you know, we're, 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 we have to understand that God is serious about everything that he does. You know, why would God send his only begotten son if he wasn't serious about sin? Sin is the issue. Sin is the only issue why Jesus came. And, and, and I want you to know this, that... Um, there is no grave that can hold our God. There is no enemy that can hold our God. The Romans, the Jews, the, the, the demons and Satan all formed an alliance. And you know what? They sentenced him to death. Then they actually crucified him. And after they crucified him, they put him in the grave and they put a huge big stone in front of the grave. Some gigantic stone. But the Bible says that on the third day, he rolled away the stone. In other words, listen to me. It would take several men to be able to move that stone. And the stone moved by the power of God. Because I want you to know this. That it doesn't matter what's going on in your life. Some of you are going through storms. You're going through suffering. You're going through hurt. You're going through a bad season. I want you to know that those things are not going to hold you. It's not going to last forever. Your victory is coming. You're about to break out. Weeping may endure for a night, but I'm telling you that joy is coming. Joy is coming. It does someone know that joy is coming in the morning? Sometimes that old devil tries to block us from remembering that, they, that just recently God brought us through a storm. Just recently he helped us through a rejection. Just recently he lifted us up out of depression. He took us out of sickness. And he tries to block us from remembering because he knows that if you remember in your current storm that you're going to say, if he did it back then, he'll do it again. Romans 34, 19 says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, come on somebody, but the Lord, but the Lord, but the Lord, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Philippians 4, 19 says this, and I'm giving you these scriptures because I want you to know that what we need to do is stop complaining and start giving God praise for the things that he promised us to do. Philippians 4, 19 says, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Not some of your needs, but all of your needs. Uh, Romans 8.31 says, what then shall we say to these things? Your depression, your rejection, uh, the loneliness that you feel. It says, if God be for us. Come on, somebody. If God be for us. It doesn't matter who is against you. Uh, th th there's, a, there's another uh, scripture that says this in Romans 8 28 all things oh come on somebody all things somebody say all things not some things but what all things work together for good to them that what love the Lord do you love the Lord today well guess what all things are starting to work out together for your good we have to shake ourselves up people and say like the praise song says I'm gonna see the victory for the battle belongs to the Lord. How many know that song? We sing it here. And we, we're confessing it. The old saints used to say, I don't know how I got over, 
but I got over. As new saints, we say it this way. If it had not been for the Lord, come on, somebody. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? You know, at different points in history, each member of the Trinity took a leading role. That's the way God designed it. They won, but in their person, they all took a leading role. But whether it was God the Father, whether it was God the Son, or God the Holy Spirit taking the leading role, whatever the role is, it was always for our good. These roles are not independent of us. God doesn't, doesn't just you know, characterize different roles just because he has nothing else to do. Every role that he placed God the Father in, every role that he placed God the Son in, every role that he placed God the Holy Spirit in, it's for our good. Someone say it's for our good. Um, so whatever, the, whatever their role is, I want you to know it's for our good and for what? His glory. You know, there's a song by Peter Cetera uh, from, the, from the band Chicago that says, we did it all for the glory of love. But we're going to change that and we're going to put another line to that. He did it all for our good and for his glory. Come on, somebody. He did it all for our good and for his glory. I don't know what that song means about we did, he did, we did it all for the glory of love. I don't really understand that. I, and I can't, and I, I don't even take time to try to figure it out. Because, you know, every time that you, that you look at the, at, the, at the tabloids, you know, all these movie stars, all these singers, they get, they get engaged today, married tomorrow, and in three months, the whole thing is dissolved. Because they, now, if you talk to them at the beginning, they say they did it all for the glory of love. I remember Michael Jackson and, um, and I forgot her name, but Elvis Presley's daughter, how that, you know, they, they came out on this big red carpet. And, and he, and this is what he said on the red carpet. He says, and they said we wouldn't make it. And six months later, they didn't make it. Because I want you to know at the end of the day, if it's not the Lord on your side... It's not going to happen. The Lord has to be on my side. The Lord, remember, the Bible says the Lord is our rear guard. So even when we can't see what's coming behind us, it doesn't matter. God stands at the rear guard and says, you ain't touching this one. This one belongs to me. This one is certified in my presence. God the Father took the leading role in the Old Testament uh, with Noah. It was God the Father who spoke to Noah who warned Noah that a flood was coming. It wasn't, it wasn't God the Son. It wasn't God the Holy Spirit. It was God the Father. And, and as God the Father, he warned them that, this, that, that he was going to destroy the whole earth. Not some of the earth, but the whole earth. And so he gave him the, the, the instructions to build an ark. And he gave him the precise measurements. He gave him the blueprint uh, to build the ark. The ark was supposed to be uh, a place of refuge, a place of safety, a place of protection for anyone who would hear his message. This is the key now. It's, well, it wasn't going to be a place of protection just because you wanted to be protected from the flood. Only if you heard his message. How many know God's word is critical? Remember, we talked about that. Um, Jesus says heaven and earth, it, it's going to expire. You know how much, how, much, how much some people love this world? If they love the world so much that they will be like, like, like the pillar of salt. Remember what happened? Is that when they were, when they, when they were leaving Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, Lot's, uh, um, Lot's wife loved the, the, the sin of the city so much. She loved the world so much. That, that, and they told her, if she looks back, you're going to lose it. And, and because, that's to show you, when you love the world, boy, it's a strong pull. That's why the Bible says that we ought to love the Lord, love God. Bible says, he that loves the world cannot love God. You can't love the world and God at the same time. Because, it, because when you do, your Bible says you cannot serve two masters at the same time. You can't be double-minded, you know, because it doesn't work. First of all, if, he, if God doesn't come in as Lord, he ain't coming in at all. And he knows this. Remember those people in, the, in Matthew chapter 7 
where they said, well, but didn't we, but, but didn't we uh, cast out demons in your name? And, and, and didn't we uh, do this in your name? And he says, depart from me. What? I never knew you. Let me say something to you. When you make a transaction with God, know that you're making a transaction with the omniscient God. He knows the deal. You can't fool him in a second. You can't fool him in a moment. You can fool people in a second in a moment, but you can't fool God. Come, come Listen to me. Um, and, so, and so this is the interesting thing to me about, about, the, about the flood. Uh, the, you know, the, these dem demographers, uh, who, these are people who count the population growth uh, at different stages in, in, in history. And they said that the world's population at that time was 241 million people. That's how many people from the time of uh, uh, Adam and Eve had actually, you know, come into existence. And listen to this. 241 million people were alive at the time. And guess how many escaped the flood? Eight. Eight out of 241 million. The rest, all the rest perished in the flood. Because you know what they did? They rejected the inspired, inerrant, infallible, eternal word of God. You, let me say something to you. No one rejects God's word, ignores God's word, disregards God's word, and gets away with it. You may get away with it for a year, for two years, ten years, but I'm telling you, judgment day is coming. It's just a matter of time. And here is what Proverbs 13, 13 says. Listen to the scripture as we're coming to the end. The message Bible puts it this way. One who despises the word will do badly. Do I need to, com do I, do I, do I need to do commentary on that? Nope. One who despises the word. In other words, you take the word lightly. You don't practice it. You don't do it. He, he, it says, you are going to do badly. But one who fears the commandment will be rewarded. I want you to know that God promises me that if I obey his word, he's going to reward me. How many here are rewarders of the word of God? Here in the New Testament, uh, uh, here is how the New Testament puts it in the NLT, James 1, 22 to 25. This is the New Living Translation. And it says, but don't just listen to God's word. But don't just listen to God's word. You know, don't, just don't come and listen because that doesn't benefit you. It doesn't help you. It doesn't cause you to grow. Nothing. It says, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are fooling yourself. What James is saying here is that people who do not practice the word do not do the word that they are fools. By the way, I'm just the messenger. This is not my message. This is his message. So don't get mad at me because he calls you fools. He says the word fool means stupid. It means silly. Someone who lacks judgment or sense. In other words, they see the word of God and you know what? And they can't make head or tails from it. They don't have the power to do it. To follow it. Verse 23 says, for if you don't, for if you listen to the word and don't obey it, it's like glancing at your, at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, but you walk away and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into his word called the perfect law of liberty that sets you free. By the way, what do we know about the word of God? The Bible says, and you, John 8, 32 says what? And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. You know what? People are trying to get free by religion. Forget it. People are trying to get free by tradition. Jesus condemned both of them and put them both in hell. Religion or tradition will not help you. You have to come to the living word of God. That's why he's called the living word of God. And, and it says here, but if you look carefully into the perfect law of liberty that sets you free... He says, um, continuing in verse 25, he says, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. One of the, one of the show ways to attract blessings to your life. How many, I don't know about you, but I like to be blessed. How many like to be blessed? I love to be blessed. 
And so, but one of the sure ways to attract blessings, direct blessings, command blessings to your life is simply be a doer of his word. What do you have to be? Let's say it together. Be a doer of his word. God will overflow you, I promise you, with blessings. He will overflow you with favor. He will overflow you with promotions. I mean, doors that have been closed will open. I remember when I got when I first got my job in the UN, the way that the UN works is that any position that comes up is 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 actually filled by the people that are within there. And so when they and so when this person that knew me, you know, you, you know, sort of uh, introduced me to to what was called personnel back then. Um, uh, they, 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 they said, listen, you know, honestly, we're just going through the motion because we only hire from within. Now, that was the, that was the, that was the situation. So I, I did the interview, left there and sort of forgot about it. And you know what? Within less than a week, they call me and says, you got the job. You know what you call that? Favor from God. God bypassed somebody else in the in in the United Nation, and he gave it to me as an outsider. Because I may be an outsider in the United Nations, but I'm not an outsider when it comes to the blessings of God. And, and so, and the, you know, the, the, there's also something that's important to understand. That while God the Father was, was active and present in the Old Testament, Jesus' the Son is, takes the leading role in the New Testament. Uh, he came to be the leading figure of salvation because that's what the New Testament is about. It's about salvation. Matthew 121 says, his name shall be called what? Jesus, for he shall save his people, what? From their sins. Again, notice again, listen, you, your sins cannot be washed away, cannot be removed by how good of a person you are. You know, there are lots of moral people in the world, really good people. You know, they're moral, they, they take care of the families, they do a lot of good things. But you know what? Good works can't bring you into the kingdom. The only way into salvation, the only way for your sins to be washed is you have to come through the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And, and, and so, uh, Jesus, uh, which the word Jesus means salvation. You know, that's what the word Jesus means. It means salvation. So when you come to Jesus, you're coming to salvation. Uh, there was a, in John 17, there was Jesus, uh, there, it's called a transfiguration. Jesus transfigured himself before Peter, James, and John. And when he transfigured himself, they saw, his, saw him in the, in the glory he had at the beginning. So that was a unique experience to see Jesus in his original glory. And, and, and many times we emphasize that as a story. But you know what's the most important thing in that story? Is the Bible says that while that was going on, a cloud formed in the heavens. And the cloud literally descended so low that it, it covered all those that were there present at the transfiguration. And out of that cloud came a voice that said, and, and you can read it in verse 5 of, of chapter 17. It says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. In other words, what God was doing at that time was transferring the leading role that he had in the Old Testament. He was transferring it to his son. <laughs> he was giving Jesus now the leading role in the New Testament. And so th this was the official, this was the official, uh, 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 as you know, changing of the guards. Well, that was the most important thing in the transfiguration. He was saying, this is my beloved son. Now it's time for you to hear him. I think John 1.14 summarizes Jesus' uh, leading role in the New Testament. This is what it says in John 1.14. And I'm reading from NIV. The word became flesh and his, and what? And made his dwelling among us. In other words, the word became what? Remember, he, in his glory, he wasn't flesh. He was spirit. But guess what? He transformed himself into flesh. And then, and because that's the only way he was able to what? Walk among us, eat among us, live among us, be, be among us. And so it says, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only. By the way, let me say something to you. Uh, when we talk about Jesus, he's the one and only. You know, by the way, this is where 
the teaching, there's a, there's a, there is a Christian group that calls themselves Jesus only. This is kind of where they got it from. A little, yeah, a little skewed, but this is where they got it from. Because you know what? They, Jesus is the one and only. He's the only one by which you can get to the Father. Jesus says, if, if you're going to come, you got to come through me. You can't come through a friend and you can't come through anybody. You got to come through him. So Jesus, now, now, let me just finish reading it. It says, uh, who came from the Father full of grace and truth. Jesus left his existence in glory. Let's, let's see if we can examine that. That was a place of peace. That was a place of love. That was a, pay, a place of God's perpetual presence. No crying. Come on, somebody. No stress. Amen. No disappointment. No worries. No fear. No anxiety. And Jesus left all of that. He left that existence to come to an earth that's full of crime, full of stress, full of sickness, full of disease. And why did he do it? Because he loved me so much. John 3, 16 says, for God so loved. Not, it didn't say God loved the world. It says God so loved the world. The word so becomes important because it expresses not just some general love, but the deepest love that you can possibly find. And so... Um, and so, it, you know, people join, you know, clubs and, and they join fraternities and they join societies and they join teams and, you know, trying to find in those things, Jesus, the peace of God. There is no peace in anyone else, but Jesus. You notice how the people at the UN, how they come together, all these leaders from all around the world, they come together to talk about peace, to try and permeate peace. And you notice that on, see, and they can talk about peace all they want, but peace is not going to come until they invite Jesus to the table. Until he, until he gets to that UN and he sits at that table, there can be no peace. Anything else other than God's peace is a false alarm. Have you ever had these people, when you're going towards a train, and they say, peace, brother, peace, sister. And then they turn around while you're walking and snatch your pocketbook. False peace. False peace. You see, but I want you to know that when Jesus gives you peace, it's real peace. Because you know what's good about God's peace? Is that when you're going through a storm, his peace is still with you. When it seems like nobody, all your haters are coming against you, guess what? His peace is still with you. And I'm telling you because I know what I'm talking about. I've been in such straits sometime that I don't even know where to turn. And even some of the people that I love and so on, they don't know how to help me. They, they mean well, but they don't have what it takes. But you know what I have in the midst of the storm? When I can't, you know, when you're in a storm, you can't really see because, because the storm, you know, everything is cloudy. Everything is dark. But you know what? Somehow there's a hand that's guiding me through that storm. And I'm making it through even though I don't know exactly where I am. Because that's, the, that's what the Bible calls him, the prince of, the prince of peace. In Deuteronomy, one of the things about God, too, that's so important if you're listening to me today is that, you know, he will, the, he, the, it says he's omnipresent. That means that he never leaves us. He's with us at all times. And, you know, the beauty for me and my wife is that not only is God only present with us, but you know what? He's also present with my children. Why? Because there comes a point in time when you're raising children where you can no longer hold their hands. You can no longer stop them, you know, and say, no, you can't cross, you know, with the light being red. You know, there's going to come a point in time where you can't be there. But you know what? That's the reason why we dedicate our children to God like you, like you guys just did. Because where you can't be, guess what? The presence of the Lord is. Oh, someone ought to shout on to the Lord. It says here in Deuteronomy 31, and this is the last verse we'll use, verse 6. It says, be strong and of good courage. Do not fear 
nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you, and he will not leave you nor forsake you. Oh, I love that. He's the one that goes what? With you. And guess what? And he will not leave you nor forsake you. Listen to me. Um, you know, there are people, when the chips are down, I mean, I think we all, those of us who are old enough know what we're talking about. Some people, when the chips are down, they're out of here. Others, when they see that you're hurting, they say, oh, they just walk away. They forsake you. Others give up on you when you're down. I mean, they just check out on you. But I want to say this to you. Jesus will never check out on you. He will always be there in your greatest storm. He'll be there in your most, in, in, the, in the moment where you feel the greatest hurt, he's going to be there. I want you to know that he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And so I present Jesus to you today. I present the one who was the leading, took the leading role in the New Testament. And then, of course, you know what? I, I can't wait to present to you the God, the Holy Spirit, who is taking the leading role right now. You got to know that. He's taking the leading role right now. That's why there's no way that Ronnie Leakey can be holy without the Holy Spirit. I don't care. If, call me pastor all you want. I can't be holy because I'm a pastor. I can only be holy because of the Holy Spirit. He's the one. The Bible says he will lead us and guide us into what? Not some truth, but all truth. And that's the reason why it's so important that we do what Jesus says in Matthew 4. 4. As a Christian, you know what we do? We read the word of God every day. We take time to pray. You know, when I first became a Christian, because I became a Christian young, they, 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 they would encourage us, listen, take five minutes before you go to school and, you know, read and pray. Five minutes. This is what my Sunday school teacher told me. And you know what? And I, I would do that. But can I say something to you? That five minutes back then seemed like five hours. No, I'm telling you. Like when I first got saved, five minutes. And, and you know what I was doing? I was looking at the clock and it seemed like the clock wasn't moving. You know, because I, I used to do it before I went to school. So I had to leave to go to school at seven. So I would pray maybe about quarter to seven. And I, and I would see quarter to seven. And when I look back, it was still quarter to seven. And when I look back. Now, if I'm watching TV, quarter to seven goes into 15 minutes before I blink. But, but you know what? As you get to know the Lord, all of a sudden, all that stuff starts to go out the window. But you know what? You got to start somewhere. So there's no, I don't care if you just do it for five minutes, but take time with the Lord every day. Because you know what I've discovered? And I can tell you this now after many multiple years, is that the only way that you get to know the Lord is spending time with the Lord. Skipping out on him. For two, for, for, for two days and for three days and for four days and for one week and for a month. I'm telling you, you all you're doing is deceiving yourself. Because the only way to get to know him is to spend time with him. It's kind of similar to like people, you know, who, who are becoming acquainted and, you know, plan to come together. You know, the way that they kind of get to know each other, spending time with each other. How are you going to know someone that you don't spend time with? You know, you, you have no clue of what, who they are, what they are. And even sometimes after spending time with them, you don't know who they are. Say amen or say ouch. <laughs> you, you know, one of the things I've, I've learned in marriage, though, that it doesn't matter how long you're married. There'll always be something you'll learn about your spouse that you didn't know on day one. And day 10th. And day 20th. And 20 years later, there's always something, you know, and that's the reason why when you get, when you plan to marry someone, you know, yeah, they're, they're, I'm going to be doing a teaching real soon is that, that says this, don't marry for love. You know, and, and it sounds strange. It may sound like way out, but I'm going to be, I'm going to be preaching on that because how many people said, oh, I love you with all my heart. <laughs> and then and then five months later they're at each other's face <laughs> tearing up each other and this is they married for love so we'll talk about 
what it is that you should be married for. Let's bow our heads for a moment. <laughs> today, I know most of you that are here today are saved, but just in case you never made a real commitment to the Lord and you need to do that, I want to give you that opportunity. That's what church is for. That's why he's here, so that we could extend his love and his grace to anyone who says, you know what, Pastor? No, putting all jokes aside, I need to commit my life to the Lord. I need to know him. I need to know him. To know him in his fullness. To know him in his glory. And, and the beauty of coming to know the Lord here is the first thing that happens the moment you accept the Lord. I'm talking about the instant or faster than an instant is that the first thing that happens to every single one of us or, or happened to every single one of us is that the moment we said yes to Jesus, you know what came? The presence of the Lord. We experience for the first time the living presence of the Lord. Where? Right here within us. And I can tell you that because I got saved very young and I, and I can't explain to you theologically or scripturally all that was happening to me because I, because I was 12 years old and I, you know, and I just, and I just wanted to accept the Lord. But the one thing I could tell you is that I knew that something different had happened to me. Mom, you know what? I knew. I knew that something had happened to me on the inside. I knew it. So much so that, that I ran home that day and took off my so-called church clothes and put on my plain clothes. And I went to my friend who was living just two doors down. And, and he was my best friend at the time. And I said, Richard, you know what? I've just accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I, I don't know, but I just feel different. You know, when I'm talking 12-year-old language, of course. And do you know that because of my testimony to my friend, some years later, my best friend got, gave his heart to the Lord. But you know what? I didn't do it. I didn't do it, you know, out of religion. I don't know what religion was at 12 years old. I just did it because I felt something that Sunday morning. I felt something that Sunday morning uh, when, when the pastor gave the altar call and I, and I came to the altar, I knew something had happened. There's a song that says, he touched me. And now I know. He touched me. And now I know. You only know this touch if you actually experience it. If I tell you about it, it ain't going to get you ain't going to get you there. If I just share with you, it's not going to happen. You have to accept him for that presence to come. And by the way, I don't care who condemns you. I don't care who hates on you. I don't care who says, oh, you're, you're a phony, you're fake. It doesn't matter. Because it has nothing to do with man. Whenever you come to Jesus, it's a divine transaction that man can touch. You know, that, you know, that's the reason why I'm so grateful for my salvation. Because you know what? Man can't touch it. I've got something that the world can't give. And the world can't take it away. And so today, if you need prayer today, I, you know, I'm here. Jesus is here. And he loves you. Cares about you. And you want to know him as your best friend. If that's you, just listen, slip your hands up real quick and put it right back down. I promise you, God bless you. Yes, I, yes, I see those hands. You can put them down. Uh, yes, I see that hand as well. God bless you. I see it. Um, that's if you feel it. If you feel this thing, this presence of the Lord that's just here, loving on you, calling on you, wanting to bring you closer to him. It's just interesting to me that if, if I knew a human being that cared that much about me, I will gravitate to that person. 
and yet we don't find someone quite like that. We have good mothers, we got good fathers, we got good sisters and brothers, but we don't have anybody like the Lord who loves us with that kind of agape love. And yet we are so hesitant. Well, I'm so glad that I just said, yes, Lord. I just said, yes, Lord. Anybody else quickly, right before we pray, just put your hands up and put it back down. You know, we, we want to pray with you. We want you to know that the Lord, he's not going to reject you. He's going to be right there with you. He's going to come and do exactly what I said to you. His presence will come. Anybody else? Quickly, right before we pray. Yes, I see. Yes, I see. I see them. I see those hands. Yes, I see them. You can put them down. Okay, I'm going to pray right now, okay, uh, for all of you, you young people, you adults, um, because I want you to know, listen to me carefully now, that this is the, this is the, this will be the most important decision of your life, barring none. There won't be any other decision that will come even close to that. Because, you know, God is a God of covenant. You know what covenant means? It means that he's a God of contract. In other words, he doesn't come into our lives without a contract, without an agreement. There has to be agreement on your part that you want him. And there has to be agreement on his part that he wants you. And that's the only way it works. If you want him 50%, he ain't coming. If you want him 75%, he ain't coming. Because you know what? When he comes, he doesn't come in at 75%. He either comes in completely or he doesn't come in at all. And so today, all you young people who lifted your hands, God bless you. You adults who lifted your hand, God bless you. I promise you that you will experience the presence of God in such a way. Don't worry about trying to explain it, but just, but just follow that, that, that presence. Follow that spirit. Follow that touch that you're, that, that you're feeling, that tug. Just follow it. And I promise you that it will always lead you like it led me, like it led so many others that are sitting in this room here uh, to a closer relationship with God. All those of you who raised your hand, just raise them one more time for me quickly. Just put, we just want to see who you are. Okay. You guys got that? Okay. So we, all right. Good. Yes. Oh, you know, I saw you. No, I did, mom. I saw you. No, I saw you. I saw you. I said that that's a blessing. I, I tell you, you know what? And I know you know the Lord, but you know what? That's a good thing. I, I Listen, I remember answering 50,000 different altar calls. Because you know what? I love the Lord. And every time I felt the presence of the Lord, Carol, I just wanted to, I, here I am. <laughs> I'm here all over again. Why? Because you know what? The experience of, 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 of first, of initially knowing Jesus, led me to love him more every time. I loved him more every day, each day. Every, you know, there's a song that says every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. That's a hymn, of course. You know, we don't sing a lot of hymns in the church. We should be singing some hymns. But that's a hymn. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. So let me just pray with you, okay? Father, thank you for all these uh, people, adults, young people uh, who have responded to your voice. They have responded to your spirit. Father, I pray today that you will lift them up. Help them to experience that presence that only you can bring. And of course, the presence has come now. Because you don't wait, you know, 40 seconds and you don't wait 20 seconds. The moment they make up in their hearts and their minds, your presence come. And, and like myself, I knew something happened. And I, and I started to understand it a lot better as the days went on, as I just, as I searched to serve you, as I fought to serve you, as I made up my mind to serve you. And so today, Father, I pray that you will strengthen them in their inner man, cause them to experience the love of God, the love that of God that's constantly with us. Help them to experience your omnipresence. Help them to experience your, um, your omnipotence, your power. Help them to experience your omniscience, that you know all things. You know what they're going through. You know what's going to happen tomorrow. And you're prepared to take them through that particular situation. Thank you, Lord. And we give you the praise.
Now, for those of you who raise your hand, the reason why we had you do this is because we spotted you and we're going to give you, we have, uh, we, you can get it, okay, and, and all those who, who raise their hand, while we're talking, you can just give them um, the bu a book. We have, this book is a really good book. It's just, it's just, you know what's good about this book is that it helps you to understand the, fun the fundamentals of the decision you made. That's what it is. It, it helps you to know the importance of reading the word, the importance of making God first in everything you do. There, there are five things that are, that, are here, that are essential. One, you must pray. That's Luke 18, 1. Matthew 4, 4. Man shall not live by, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Third one is you got to put God first. Matthew 6, 33 says, but seek first what? And what? All these things shall be added. The, the fourth thing is you must give to God. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10 says what? Honor the Lord with your substance and the first fruit of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with and your, and your large containers will overflow. And then finally, Hebrews 10, 25. Do not forsake the assembling of yourself together. In other words, church. Church is essential. These are the five essentials if you're going to grow. If, if any of these are not happening, I promise you, you're not growing. You can't because then God would be a liar. These are the five essentials. If you have those five essentials, there are a couple others that you learn as you go on, but these are the five essentials of the Christian life. And if those things are in place, I promise you, for those of you who, who are watching us, you know, uh, through our YouTube channel, I want you to know that same thing for you. God loves you. Just follow those five uh, uh, principles, and I promise you that you too will grow in the Lord and in the power of his might. Okay, let's give the Lord a hand cup, everybody. Okay, as we prepare to give to the Lord, we got to make sure that everyone got one of these, okay? Uh, all right, um, let's see. Did we get everybody? Did you get one, Mom? Did, did they give you anything? Mom? Yeah. She got one? Oh, no, okay. No, she, they, 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 okay, you know what? Oh, okay, all right. Okay, so that's good. All right. Um, so as we, you know, we don't, we don't do the offering basket now. Now, if you give, want to give to the Lord, all you do is on your way in. If you want to do it that way, you can just put it in that offering stand. Or the second way to do it, second or third way to do it, is you can give. Where, 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 oh, they're not there. But that's okay. We, we, you can give through Zelle. You know, Zelle is one of the ways that we, and many, in fact, 90% of our people give through Zelle. I mean, most of our giving comes that way, and that's the best way to give. Then the next way that people give is they give through Tidely. That's where they, where's Todd? Yeah, they, you just text the word give to that number, and that's where you do it. The next way where you can give is you can give through a check, of course, and you can put a check there or you can mail it. doesn't really matter. And we're just saying this so that those of you who are watching us as well, you know these are the ways that you can give. Uh, and then finally, you give cash, okay? Um, and so, and you just put it in there, uh, whatever, however you choose to do that. Uh, so we thank God. And by the way, uh, I, I read a scripture on... Thursday night at the uh, live Zoom service. By the way, Carol, that was an excellent message again. It was such a blessing, such a blessing. And, um, and I gave you a scripture, and it says that may God increase you more and more. And not only you, but also what? Your seed, your children's children. You know why my wife and I give the way we do? Because we want our, our seed, our children to be blessed. Every time I give to the Lord, uh, Eon, I am, I am literally casting a blessing upon my children. Because the Bible says that the blessings of the Lord goes, what? Up to a thousand generations. Trevor, so when you give, you see that little girl, that she, she, she's blessed. And guess what? Her offspring will, will be blessed. And, the, and that offspring of that offspring will be blessed. I'm telling you, I can't afford not to give. Because I want all my offspring to be blessed. Oh, come on, somebody. I want all my offspring to be blessed. The ones that I'll never see here on earth. I don't care. 
because I know that if I leave it in the hands of the Lord, they, they're going to be all right. There was someone called Mephishabeth. Mephishabeth Miss, oh, that's, that's a hard name to pronounce. Uh, I think that's what it is. But it was, a friend, it was David's best friend. And his father, you know, did something that wasn't so nice towards David. And so you figure that David, that, that, but then at some point, even though th this boy was, um, was this king's son, somehow, you know how, how sometimes things turn on people who are rich. They're rich, but somehow it doesn't pass on to their children. Well, at some point he became homeless. The son of a rich king became homeless. And do you know that when David heard about this boy, even though his father did David wrong, you know what he did? Because of the fact of, because of the fact that he, he believed that we must always do what is right and not what is wrong. Not take revenge like some dude is trying to do right now. <laughs> and some people will get it next, next week, right? Um, you know what? And, and, and what he did is he brought him into his home and he fed him and he gave him food, gave him clothing, restored him, gave him money, gave him a place to stay. And I'm saying to you, if man can do that, how much more will not your God do that to you? Amen? Yeah. Okay. Announcements. Celise. <laughs> Happy Sunday, everyone. All right, our weekly announcements. We just want to always remind you to invite someone to church, even if you send them the Zoom link. A lot of people don't want to get up on a Sunday morning, but that's okay. We go live. <laughs> so you can send them. There's a few people I send the link to. There are different ways you can tell them to subscribe to our the Instagram, LFNY, uh, the YouTube channel as well. And even if someone tells you no, Always drop that little seed. Hey, you know, we're having something at church on Sunday. You should come. Um, we are also continuing our weekly consecration every Tuesday, 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. You can look out for the instructions from our text messaging service. It's 77411. If you're not on our 77411 text messaging list, please send a text to 718 306-4757. Again, that's 718-306-4757. You'll receive the alerts for our events, uh, notifications, the praise and worship song for every week. Um, and this Thursday, don't miss the Zoom service we have at 7 p.m. That also comes through the text messaging service if you don't have that number. Again, it is 718-306-4757. And it will come from the number 77411, okay? As well as we are excited about um, Palm Sunday service. That's April 2nd. We'll be giving out palms at the end of the service. Um, so singing, dancing, skits, spoken word, et cetera, is going to be a part of our epic Easter program. We are still excited. We're still in the works. We're practicing after service. Um, we want you to be excited about inviting people to come. They are going to have an experience when they do come. Our teens are involved. Our children are involved. Anyone who's here, if you aren't involved, it's not too late. You can still get involved. We need help um, directing, assisting, moving the little kids around. So if you're available, um, we will be having practices. Actually, what's that? This Saturday? The 1st and the 8th of April, 3 p.m. 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. We're going to have both Saturdays. Both Saturdays, okay? So um, if you have children who are involved, please make sure that they make that. If you can't, it's all right. We'll work something out. But we want to make sure that this program is epic, okay? It's going to be wonderful. So invite your friends, invite your families. We do have flyers, um, digital and hard copy. We want it to be standing room only. And trust me, we have seen it before, and it can be done. All right. Love you with the love of the Lord. Everybody have a good week. Amen. Amen. Now, you know, I, I want to commend you, Jermaine and Veronica. You dedicated your baby last week, and here you are again today. I, I can't tell you just how, 
how, how far that goes, how far that goes. Um, and I know, I heard that you, you work, what, you, what, come, what, what airlines you work for? JetBlue. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's, that's amazing to me. And I heard, and I understand what you're going to be doing soon and congratulations on that whole thing. Um, but I tell you, that's the best thing you can do with your child as we did with the baby dedication. You know, that's what they did with the baby Jesus in order to start his life in the right direction. And um, some Kevin, where's Kevin? Oh, you're here for the second time, right, Kevin? Okay, Kevin, so good to, it's good to have you, okay. Uh, Carlan, okay, I don't know, how should I pronounce her name? Because when I ask Carol your name, she says like Carlene, right? Carlan, okay. All right, so for those of you on the record, it's Carlan, but for the, their friendship, it's Carleen. Okay, and then Rakeem is here for the first time. Where's Rakeem? Oh, good, Rakeem. <laughs> all right, okay. Nice to have you. Nice to have you. Okay, everybody, let's all stand, shall we? We're, we're done. It's only 20 after 20. You know, it's funny. When I, when I was going to church when I was a kid, church started at, well, no, Sunday school started at 10, right? And we weren't finished till about 2, 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Then we had to come back for Sunday night service. And, and you weren't even there till 10 o'clock. And not getting home till about 11, 11.30. So you, so you guys better be glad for this era. <laughs> At least, I mean, parents hardly had any. Because, you know, the world, they have the weekend, right? So they catch up on a few things, of course. But then, you know, we're going constantly 24-7 with our children. But you know what? It worked out for me and my parents. Because look, I'm, I'm serving the Lord. My sisters are serving the Lord. You know what? So it's, it's a good thing. You can't invest too much in God anyway. But I'm just saying that it's early. And so that's why, you know, giving God two or three hours of, your, of, of, of his day. Remember, it's his day, not our day. Giving him back three hours of his own day. I mean, it's the least that we can do. Father, lift both your hands. Father, I pray today for a special blessing upon these, your people. These are your people, the sheep of your pasture. And I'm asking you that you will look down upon them. Let the angels of the Lord encamp round about them and their children and their children's children. I'm asking you that your face will shine upon them. That means that you're going to give them favor in everything that they do. Promotions that they didn't deserve. Uh, houses that they haven't built, opportunities that they didn't, didn't qualify for, that you're going to do great and mighty things on their behalf. And most of all, I pray that the presence of the Lord will go with them. If your presence doesn't go with us, we don't want to leave this place. And so we ask you right now, keep them from the muggers and from all the criminal people and, 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 and people who are driving crazy, Lord. Keep your people from all these kind of accidents that it will not take their lives in Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen. Amen. Say hello to somebody. Will you do that?